Yeah. Yeah. There is no touch of plastic. Alright, okay. <coughs> so are we ready? Yes. Great. Mm-hmm. <coughs> so, Morgan, what were you doing before you got to pass and balance? Oh my, I'd had an entire career as a child, and I was on my second career back. It was, uh, boy, I felt like I was a veteran by the time Dallas came around. Um, I started out in the business when I was five years old and did motion pictures and uh, a lot of television shows, many, many commercials as a child actress. And then when that all ended and the childhood career was over when I was 14, I went back to school for the first time Then when I was old enough, I moved to New York to start over again with a new name, a new personality, a new look. I became a new person. I worked back in New York and then lived in Japan for two and a half years as a cosmetic model. When I came back to Los Angeles, um, I started doing movies of the week and, you know, big, actually bigger projects, miniseries and things like that. And the thing that really turned it around for me was when I was in Moviola for David Wolper and I played Vivian Lee uh, the night she was discovered to be Scarlett O'Hara and I think that was the one thing that brought me to the attention of the Dallas producers because it got so much press and people were so um, you know curious to see who the girl was that was going to play Vivian Lee that that kind of generated an excitement for me to be brought in for Dallas. So, did they have a specific part <coughs> in, in mind when they when they got you in? You know, it was funny because I got I had just gotten married and um, didn't even have time for a honeymoon. Came back to L.A. My agent called me and said they're looking to add a new character to the TV show Dallas. Now, I knew the show kind of peripherally. I didn't really watch it every week at the time, but the Who Shot JR thing was huge and and I knew that it was a it, it was an absolutely phenomenal show. So um, I said, Well what kind of character are they looking for? And they said, Well they really don't know. She's going to be the half sister of Pamela Ewing and Cliff Barnes, but they don't know what direction. They'll know it when they see it. So I thought, oh my gosh, do I really want to go do this? I just got married. I'd really like to spend time with my husband. And I decided, all right, fine, I'll go. I went over to MGM Studios and walked into a room full, full of women, every size, shape, age, hair color, you name it. And I thought, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I knew it was about a two-hour wait. I had two or three pages of dialogue to look at. Finally, it was my turn to go in. And I had what you call attitude (laughs) when I went in there because I was so tired and I was so frustrated and I didn't want to be there. So I read the dialogue and said, is that what you want? Because I I gotta go. And I walked out. And when I left, I called my agent and I said, oh, I blew it big time. I blew it. I was so rude and so nasty and had such attitude. And they said, well, you know, it happens, whatever. That's what they wanted. That's what they decided Catherine Wentworth would be, would be this, you know, kind of rich girl who had grown up in Switzerland and had attitude and became a villain. So, you see, you never know. Hmm? What, um, what was it like on the set? Was there lots of fun and games and hygiene and things? Yes, there, there were, you know. Um, I, I was on the show between 81 and I think I did a few shows in 87, uh, but the, the majority of my shows were done really when, when it was at the height, when it was the number one show all over the world and everyone was talking about it. And I remember some fun times we used to have in the morning. Larry would come in and we'd all be sitting in the makeup room and we'd all be getting ready to go. And it would be a Wednesday, and the ratings would come out on Wednesday. And Larry would grab the newspaper and do this and go, we did it, we beat them again, you know, because it was this big rivalry between Dynasty and Dallas. And so we'd all go, yes, we're number one. And that was, I mean, we had so much fun. We had this thing going back and forth with beating Dynasty. And um, 
the cast on the show, see, I worked mainly with Larry, Patrick, uh, Victoria, and Ken Kershaw. That was my little storyline. So I rarely saw Linda, Sue Ellen, or, um, or uh, Charlene Tilton. I hardly saw them at all. But we had so much fun. Larry and Patrick are just... You know, they're clowns. They just joke around all the time. And they're so professional that they can joke around two minutes before they have a heavy scene to do. And right there, they're into it. So they're amazing. And um, did, they, did they tease you at all? Oh, they did. In the camera. beginning. <laughs> on camera, sometimes Patrick would be making faces at me on camera, you know. And I'm thinking, okay, i got to do this really well. Uh, Larry was... Larry was really, he's such a fun guy to work with because he's not at all like J.R. Ewing. Not at all. I mean, it's like night and day, like he's putting on a set of clothes and he becomes J.R. Ewing. But, um, yeah, Larry, Larry joked around. And he, you know what? He knew the people he could joke around with. So did Patrick. They knew because if somebody came in that was very, very serious and didn't want to, then, you know, they kind of backed off and, and, and knew not to do it because they didn't want to throw anybody off. So with me, they knew they could get away with it. I'd been acting since I was a kid, so I could take anything. <laughs>